Well, what do you know? We made it to episode 10. Start your engines. The great scenery construction caper continues. And the first item for today, I'm going to create some support columns for the overpass. My daughter and I were out driving recently and we took some photos of some real support columns on the highway nearby. And while those ones were made of reinforced concrete, these are just going to be made out of pine and some balsa wood. After a lot of experimentation and some critical measurements, I've cut them at a specific angle to bank the curves. And then just like the real columns in our photographs, I'm using these pieces of balsa wood to add to the top and base. This will make a lot more sense once I get some paint on these things. For the ends, I've just cut out these little pieces of balsa. Now, they don't have to be a precise cut fit. In fact, the rougher they are, the better. Once again, the paint will make a world of difference. As usual, I'm using my favourite craft glue, the Stringy Stringy. And would you believe this is the exact same bottle of glue that I started this whole series with. It's still going. It's not bad glue. I just wish it wasn't so stringy. Can't complain about it as far as value for money is concerned. And so there you go. I've just quickly knocked up two of these things. Once the measurements were settled upon, they weren't really that hard to make. Now for the paint. Just like my Mountains of Doom, I've mixed up my own shade of grey. I'm attempting to get a sort of a raw concrete look, just like those ones out on the highway. What do you think? I think they're not too bad at all. And now to make a couple more. There you go. Look familiar? You probably pass by dozens of these things on your way to work each day. And now I have my very own. Not bad at all. Next item on the agenda, it's time at last to do some ground cover. I'm kicking this off with some medium grey ballast along the edges of the track. But before we get started, I'm placing some cardboard down on the table surface. And for this purpose, I'm using plain old manila folders. Hands down the most economical way of doing this. Nearly 10 times cheaper than craft cardstock. And there's double the amount of cardboard since they're folders. Go figure. In fact, I've been noticing lately that if it's got the word craft written on the product, it's 10 times dearer than normal. So buyer beware. Now I'm adding the ballast dry. I'm not putting down any glue as yet. This allows you to spread it and shape it like a miniature landscape gardener. For the glue mix, I'm adding one part PVA, one part water, and a few squirts of isopropanol alcohol. And not shaken, stirred. Then for the best application, use a syringe so you can focus it tightly into the corners. Unlike what you see me doing here. With the ballast completely saturated with the glue mix and now drying, I've decided to start working on one of my tyre walls. Now I'm well aware that the traditional way of doing a tyre wall is to stack them directly on top of one another, but hey, I like to think outside the box and do things my way, so I'm staggering them just like this. I'll be adding some advertising banners a little later, but so far, looking good. And while everything's in complete disarray, I thought I'd take the opportunity to add another strip light to this far end bridge. Also looking good. Next, I'm creating a grimy concrete look for the back of the pit lane garages. Only three shades of grey for this effect. And now some more medium grey ballast, this time around those faux concrete columns. I'm starting to get the hang of using the syringe, not so squirty squirty as before. Of course, you can use the jug itself to pour the glue mixture out into the main body of the ballast, but definitely stick to the syringe for those edges and tight corners. And here's the story so far. It's really starting to take shape. Lots of grey, but don't worry, there'll be plenty of colour when we put all this back together again. 12 hours later, and the glue is dry. And there's no loose particles either. This is by far the most effective method for laying this ground cover. Definitely no loose particles. Amazing. I will, however, give it a gentle work over with the vacuum once it's all done, just to be sure. You definitely don't want any loose particles getting into your slot cars. Not a good idea at all. Now here's another reason for using the manila folders. That particular type of cardboard goes a certain way when drenched with the glue mix. It buckles and bubbles, then dries to give you this authentic looking finish. 
The painted section, however, is nice and flat, just like concrete. Very happy with that result. Meanwhile, outside I'm working on the last of the mountains of doom, or rather, embankments of doom. I've enjoyed working on these things, but I am kind of relieved it's over. A lot of work and a lot of mess, but the end result, well, it speaks for itself. I'll add a few extra little blemishes to these things, little weeds, little bushes, little shrubs, maybe a few trees, and who knows, maybe I'll add some of those earthy tones too. And now for something completely different, my new cat. This week, the family and I visited Empire Revival, basically a great big warehouse full of antiques and vintage collectibles. I found this little treasure hidden amongst a random pile of superhero memorabilia. Don't know why it was there, but it was definitely coming back with me to the garage. What a find. It's incredibly high quality with embroidered raised lettering and graphics. Never been worn, still has the cardboard insert. I'd say it's leftover stock from somewhere, but it's the genuine article. Monaco Grand Prix Souvenir Cap. Ferrari edition, I gather, from the colours. And if anyone can tell me more, let me know in the comments. And no, it's not made in China. It's the real deal, made in France. Now I've got something to wear when we actually get around to doing some racing. Thank you, Empire Revival. Love it. Now this might seem highly unusual, but we got some mail. Ooh, show us your package. Wow! Today's package is yet another one all the way from China. And I must say, it's just amazing how they always arrive on the very day they're needed. Thank you, AliExpress. Now, the last time I was at the airport, those charming folk pulled me aside and grilled me for nearly half an hour before letting me go, thanks to my rather charming wife who, for some reason, slipped her prescription medication into my carry-on luggage. I'm serious, they were very concerned about me. So somebody please explain to me how this massive haul managed to get through customs without so much as raising a single eyebrow. Honest, officer, they're trees for my slot car track. Sure, mate, sure they are. Actually, they look rather good. Nice shape, nice build quality, nice rich green colour. But for some reason, they appear a little bit out of focus. What's up with that? There's about five different sizes and all in all, I think I've got about a hundred trees. Should be enough, I hope. Now for this next item, I kept some of these offcuts from the Mountains of Doom. I'm going to create some little hills, or mounds, or grassy knolls, whatever you call them, lumpy bits. First thing is to arrange the offcuts to form a rudimentary shape. I'll be able to poke the trees into this stuff and they'll stay upright. Next, I'm going to apply some of this plaster cloth, apparently a favourite of model railroaders. You just cut it into strips, then soak those individually in a pan of water for about 10 seconds. Take the piece and lay it over some of the foam and then gently shape it as desired. Add another piece next to that one and so on and so on until you've got the whole area covered. If there's sections that look as though they need some more, add some more. Just keep going until you're happy with the result. Then have a close inspection of all the joins and make sure that nothing's separated or poking out or... Well, you get the idea. Just make sure it's good. But don't be too pedantic. Remember, we're going to add a whole heap of stuff on top of this once it's dry. And hey, check out this guy's technique. What a professional. Oh, hang on, that's me. Good job. Yeah, real good. Get down there, you. And you too. The old... Bloody hell, this is awkward. Whose idea was this anyway? Ah, oh, mine again, yeah. Well, at least all this effort will be worth it. Well, I hope it will be. Yeah. And there you go at last, the finished plaster cloth treatment. Looks like the scene of a homicide, if I'm going to be brutally honest. And now all we have to do is wait another 12 hours for it to dry. But thanks to the magic of YouTube, you won't have to wait that long. Next on the agenda, let's add some banners. I've made another little tyre wall up the far end of the circuit, and I found some awesome looking banners to print out, like this Shell Helix one. Very nice. I'm using some stringy stringy glue to attach them to the tyres. 
And on the other side, some Red Bull racing. Also very nice. It's these little touches that'll really make this raceway come to life. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. It's finally starting to look like an actual raceway. Love these little touches. And another 12 hours later, it's time to paint a base colour onto our homicide scene. Now once we add the green grass, these browns and burnt sienna hues will poke through here or there and give it a much more authentic look. Which is a good thing, because quite frankly, that's looking like a festering mound of loaded diapers. Just saying. Yuck. Let's change the subject, shall we? Next, I'm creating my first batch of YouTube slot car channel logos. These channels were all very helpful and even inspired me to start my own channel. So as a special tribute, they'll now be on display for all to see. I've simply sized and printed these logos onto glossy photo paper. Cut them out carefully with this pair of scissors and then simply mounted them upon some custom-made balsa wood frames. Too easy. And just like that, we're off and running. And as you can see, there's plenty of space for more. Welcome aboard, fellas. Hey, they look pretty good, don't they? Now that the paint is dry, it's time to brush on some more of that glue mix. Unlike the technique with the ballast, I'm taking a different approach with the grass. The idea is that I want to gently sprinkle the grass onto the glue, let it fall where gravity takes it. As you can see, I'm not exactly trying to smother the mound with grass, but rather take a more artistic approach. We want some of that base colour to show through here and there, like there's been a bit of erosion and that the grass isn't exactly growing everywhere. See how that's coming to life? And by the time we add trees and shrubs, it should look really good. Yeah, that's the effect I'm going for. Now let's do some more. First up, a nice generous coating of our glue mix. Then we get all arty again and sprinkle our grass to taste. The grass I'm using, by the way, is Woodland Scenics. And there's our result. But we're not finished yet. The finishing touch is to add a mist of that glue mix using a spray bottle. Like the ballast, make sure you douse it all thoroughly from top to bottom. Doesn't matter if it looks saturated, when it dries, it'll look fantastic. Which at last brings us to the trees. Let's do our bit for climate change and get planting. I'm using a regular kitchen variety skewer to make the little holes. And I'm just stuffing it in there. No glue necessary at this stage. Maybe some later using the syringe to squirt it in at the base of the tree trunk. But for now, I'm just trying to take my time and create a typical forest layout. I'm placing the taller trees on the higher ridges and then the medium size and smaller ones just down below. I'm randomising them here and there and just trying to get a natural tree line look. Yeah, that's starting to take shape. Not bad at all. And who'd have thought the image of a bunch of plastic trees would be so satisfying? Yeah. Which brings us to the moment you've all been waiting for. Ferrari versus Lamborghini. Ferrari 
what a race. Oh, and what a shot. They were moving so fast, they've lost their rear spoilers. Literally ripped off by the wind. Guess we'll have to call in the super glue marshals to sort that one out. Let's hear it for Ferrari and Lamborghini. What a great race. And a close one too. Awesome. Well, wasn't that exciting? We might have to watch it back a few times. It was rather fast and furious. Wow. Uh, don't worry about the cars. We'll fix the spoilers. Or maybe we'll leave them like this. They do look pretty slick without them. Let's have a look around the circuit. Well, 10 episodes in. It's hard to believe. It's also hard to believe the work that's been done. It's definitely coming along. The tree's looking fantastic. Uh, and that grey ballast is really nice up against the edges of the track. I like that effect. Um, there's a fair bit more to do, but not as much as I first thought. A few more episodes and I think it'll be more or less done. Um, now I've got a space here reserved for uh, the Ferris wheel. This area here, well, first of all we're going to populate the back of the pits with things like a little ambulance, a fuel tanker, lots of crew members, people, press, etc. Uh, barriers, all the appropriate decorations. And then at this end, I thought we'd make it sort of like a, a fair kind of vibe. You know, you've got these little uh, grandstands here. Uh, but behind, I'm going to have a couple of those food stalls that you can get at Magnetic Racing. And yes, I saw the news that their Ferris wheel is just about ready. I'm hoping it's motorised, and I'm also hoping it has lights. If not, I'm sure we'll figure out how to make that a thing. Um, moving on around here, the uh, tyre wall and the signage worked out great. Um, in here, we're going to build a obviously a, a wall that's going to look like, um, I don't know whether to go a stone wall, a brick wall, or a grimy concrete wall. There's another one to go on this side, and then also up the other end. That'll finish that off. Uh, needless to say, I'm waiting on some uh, straight shoulders. They should have been here in time for, to make this latest video, but they... You know, the listing was on eBay. Oh, who was it? Uh, show us your slots. They've come through for me before. This time is a bit disappointing. They had the ad on eBay. I bought the things. And next thing you know, they're ringing up saying, oh, we don't actually have them. Well, why is it on eBay if you're out of stock? Take the bloody ad down. I really got to wonder, you know, how these people function sometimes. Um, but anyway, when... When that box of straight shoulders get here, there's two going in there. There's another one or two going here to extend that. All this will be the grey ballast. Also along here, um, ballast will go in here as well, under the bridge there. This will be glued in place. More ballast, pretty straightforward. Um, and it, it, it'll just finish off these little areas that are left undone. That's a straight shoulder, that's a straight shoulder, and I think that's all of them. Um, I've got to get some curved ones to finish off the centre section. That's obviously going to continue around there. And that's about it. There's not a lot more, not really much more to, to add. Um, of course, there'll be little tyre walls and more uh, banners and billboards here and there. That'll really bring it to life. And uh, this particular cliff face here, I'm really liking this. Uh, the object is to fill it with these little logos as a, just as a nod, as a tribute to these other channels that have entertained me, and I'm sure they've entertained you as well. Um, I think it's a cool thing to have. Um, what else? Oh, now, we're getting to the point where it's going to be time to really get serious about lighting. So I've I found another strip light. And no, this one wasn't in the back shed this time. It was in a box behind this big black curtain. 
Um, but I want to get some lights that fit underneath these things shining down as the cars pass through. So we want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That will look really cool. Um, strip lighting won't fit under this one, so I'm going to have to have something else. I'll be on the lookout. Uh, there'll be some sort of street style lighting, maybe along the front straight. But the thing that I worry about is that it's so easy to reach out to get something, not see it and smash it, basically. <laughs> In the middle of an intense race, it's going to easily happen. I've got my eye on the magnetic racing stadium style LED uh, spotlights that I think you can get them in a four pack. They're not cheap, but they do look fantastic. Similar kind of architecture to the mobile gantry. Um, it comes with all the lights. You can get a power supply, but I think you can run it on any suitable 12 volt power supply, really. But um, four of those. Gather, uh, staggered around the circuit will look very nice. Um, another thing I'm thinking of doing, call me mad, call me insane, but this was a crazy idea, and this is something for the next season of episodes. Uh, we've manufactured our mountains of doom, but what if they're just foothills? Seriously, what if they're just mere foothills? I'm thinking of painting a mural on that back wall, an actual mountain of doom. Uh, or to put it more bluntly, an active volcano. <laughs> so, so it would be using the same grey colours, but up the top we've got lava spilling out. We've got reds and yellows and oranges, lava spilling out. The TV will stay there. We'll move all these banners out. I'd like to hang the Red Bull one just up here from the ceiling, sort of forward, and then put in some sort of rigging either side and have those flags staggered on an angle. Give this a, a, a whole sense of... Um, dimension but i reckon if it's done well if it's done right it'll have a real multi-dimensional effect when you walk into the room and it should be pretty stunning alternatively it could look like absolute crap but hey i've run this idea past my dear wife and she went yeah that's a good idea well they're my words they're not hers but she she was she was open to the idea I got the thumbs up, so that's that's terrific. But now I'm, uh, yeah, now I've sort of got to go and learn how to paint. Well, I've done a little bit in the past, but um, that's a big project to take on. Um, I think it could look pretty, pretty fantastic. Another thing I'd like to do is upgrade these things. And everybody, I can hear you all now going, yes, of course, yes, duh. Yeah, they're very toyish. Um, so I've got my eye on the true speed ones, but I really like those wireless Franken slots. And I want to get six. I want to set this up with six controllers ready to go um, with the holsters mounted on the, the edge here. The Franken slots I know have very, very little in the way of latency, those wireless ones. Um, latency is an issue with any kind of wireless control and nobody knows that better than me with uh, wireless uh, controllers I've used with guitars and bands and microphones, etc. Latency can be a real issue and especially when you're wanting instant responsive cars, you know, uh, you don't want any milliseconds of delays, you know, messing with your decision making. So that's probably why I prefer the, the corded ones and the, the true speed would be quite okay. But the Frankenstock, Franken slot wireless ones, they're more expensive for a reason. And that is very, very minimal latency. But six of those, what's that, about 1200 bucks? Yay. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, I'm also going to get some of those second level 
buildings with the, the blue plastic, one for that end, probably the press, the, the media press, I, for, I forget what they call the actual thing, but anyway, they sit on top here, um, finish off the pit lane. I want to light these both internally and create some sort of scene going on inside these garages. Lights internally, maybe some lights over the top here, just hanging over. I'll keep an eye out for the right ones. Um, and then we've got to get some people. The Carrera ones are just so expensive, aren't they? $80 for a pack of 20 sitting spectators. Um, and yeah, I'd prefer them painted because I really don't like painting and this one's still not done yet. Um, so I'm on the lookout for good value 132 scale figures of all sorts. Um, yeah, if anybody knows the ideal place to find them, please let me know in the comments. Now it's at this point where I'd like to say a huge thank you to all the subscribers so far. It's amazing, the comments from people, you've been extremely positive, very supportive, and most important, you're enjoying the content. You're enjoying my babbling on. Who'd have thought? Uh, I'm not gonna give away anything yet as to what's coming up in the next season of episodes, um, but it's gonna get pretty exciting. It's gonna be more focused on some actual racing, I don't think there's much really in the way of content to do as far as finishing this, this circuit off. Uh, like I mentioned before, there's not a lot of ground cover to do. It'll just be lots of little, you know, banners and things, little printouts, and etc. The lighting will be tricky, though. That could take a little while. Definitely will bring it to life. And, yeah, if I tackle that... Mountain of Doom mural. That is going to be an interesting one. That's an epic fail in the making, I sense, but yeah. Will he attack it or will he just leave it alone? We shall see. Um, there's not a lot of room here to work. That's one thing I'm dreading. Yeah. Like I was saying, thanks again to all the subscribers. And let me point out one of these things. This guy here, Slot Car Wild Man, was actually the first subscriber who had his own channel. So he's now been immortalized on the, on the layout. Good on you, Wild Man. Great to have you aboard. And I hope you got a kick out of seeing your logo there. Um, and uh, Travis of that slot car guy, thanks, mate, for the shout-out. That was a wonderful shout-out. I, I was blown away. My wife was blown away. My daughter was blown away. We could not believe it. Very, very nice of you. Um, and so that's about all for this episode. I guess we'll wrap it up there. And I'll see you on the next episode in the next season of Hughes Garage Slot Car Adventures. <laughs>